Good evening. In this segment, I would like to talk about the carrying capacity of the earth. It is an ecological word, carrying capacity of the earth. In other words, how many human beings uh, earth can support. Or in an ecosystem, how many deer population it can support. In a pond, how many fishes it can support. In a grassland, how many rabbits it can support. Carrying capacity refers to the maximum abundance of species that can be sustained within a given area of habitat. When a population grows until it gets as large as its habitat is said to have reached its carrying capacity. When an ideal population is at equilibrium with the carrying capacity of its environment, the birth and death rates are equal and size of the population does not change. Populations larger than the car carrying capacity are not sustainable and will degrade their habitat. A population that reproduces without limits will grow exponentially. That is, the population will grow faster and faster as each generation multiplies. Two children will produce four children, eight great-grandchildren, and so on and so forth. A population that draws its resources faster than they can be replenished naturally is heading for a run-in with the carrying capacity of its habitat. Individuals in a population that has exceeded the carrying capacity of its habitat may have poor health and suffer from malnutrition because of the compromised living conditions. When this happens, the weakest individuals may die. Other population as a whole may become more vulnerable to further environmental stress or disease. Sometimes a large number of individuals in a population die as a result of overshooting the carrying capacity of their habitat. This is known as die-off. Carrying capacity can also be damaged by overpopulation, in this case overpopulation of humanity, which leads to excessive exploitation of resources and the degradation of the habitat's ability to support the species. Human population growth is presenting ecological challenges worldwide. The pressure of a growing human population on Earth's resources also makes it more difficult for plants, animals, and other organisms to adapt to climate change. Humans, like all organisms, can only sustain themselves and their population by having access to the products and services of their environment, including those of other species and ecosystems. Clearly, the cultural evolution of human socio-technological systems has allowed enormous increases to be achieved in carrying capacity for our species. This increased effectiveness of environmental exploitation has allowed a tremendous multiplying of the human population to occur. In prehistoric times, that is more than 10,000 years ago, all humans were engaged in a primitive hunting and gathering lifestyle, and their global population probably amounted to several million individuals in the year 2012, because humans have been so adept at increasing their carrying capacity of their environment, more than six and a half billion individuals were sustained. The global population is still increasing. Anthropocentrism is putting pressure on the carrying capacity of the earth. 
it is a clear conflict between anthropology and cosmology. As a result, an enormously greater number of earth species have not fared as well, have been displaced or made extinct as a consequence of ecological changes associated with the use and management of the environment by humans, especially through loss of their habitat and over harvesting. In general, any increase in the carrying capacity of the environment for one species will negatively affect other species. In addition, there are increasingly powerful indications that the intensity of environmental exploitation required to sustain the large populations of humans and our symbionts is causing important degradations of carrying capacity. Symptoms of this environmental deterioration include an extinction crisis, decreased soil fertility, desertification, deforestation, fishery declines, pollution and increased competition among nations for scarce resources. Many reputable scientists believe that the sustainable limits of Earth's carrying capacity for the human enterprise may already have been exceeded by a couple of billions. This is a worrisome circumstance especially because it is predicted that there will be additional large increases in the global population of humans. If it is true that the human enterprise has exceeded Earth's carrying capacity for our species, then compensatory adjustments will either out, have to be made by the human economy or humanity will face disastrous consequences. Certain animals and plants have a built-in sense of carrying capacity so that instead of overshooting and having a die-off, they remain within the limits of their habitat's ability to support them. Like trout, a fish, for instance, stop breeding as prolifically when the population density increases too dramatically. We can also learn from nature how to stay in line with the carrying capacity of the earth by setting limits to human population growth. Fortunately, some parts of the world are even experiencing negative population growth. The tremendous rise in population may one day come to an end. Anthropocentric interests have colonized every continent, every ecosystem, and every habitat. In doing so, we have sidelined all other life on Earth. Today's ecosystem managers realize that in order to be sustainable over time, ecological management has to take into account the needs of all the inhabitants of the land, from humans and teak trees to frogs and soil organisms. Management of the world's ecosystems will continue to be a great challenge. Understanding the natural carrying capacity and limits of the land is important to designing good management strategies. As humans increase, biodiversity decreases. By the turn of the 22nd century, there will be 10 billion people on Earth. And such an explosion of growth can put pressure on food and water resources that will lead, perhaps, to the extinction of our own species. Considering and respecting the lessons from the ecological perspective of the carrying capacity of the Earth is the valuable reminder to Homo sapiens if he intends to continue his existence in the future. It's the numbers that count in the end. If there were still only the 250 million human beings who were alive at the time of the Roman Empire, we could do almost anything we wanted with impunity. Industrialize, eat lots of meat, driving big cars, and fly halfway around the planet on holiday. Stephen LeBlanc, director of collections Peabody Museum of Archaeology 
and Ethnology, Harvard University, Boston, send out a warning when he writes on carrying capacity of the earth. History shows, archaeology shows, that humans grow their population until they reach the carrying capacity of their environment. They have always done this. Hunters and gatherers have done it. Early farmers have done it. Everybody in the world has done it. And when you reach the carrying capacity, in part because things are never constant, it doesn't take long before climate gets you. The climate gets just a little bit worse and suddenly you run out of resources and you compete with your neighbors to get those resources so you don't starve. Humans have never been able to live comfortably within the carrying capacity on the other hand. They have never been able to restrict their growth so that they stayed well below it, below it enough so that when the climate turns a little bit against them, it doesn't have a major effect. They've never been able to do this. The other thing that comes out of looking at the deep past is that this process can sometimes take a couple of hundred years. Your growth can be slow. The climate can get better and better for a while. You can sometimes let this go on for maybe two, maybe even 300 years. I can't find any place in the world where it ever went longer than that without there being a crisis that resulted in warfare, depopulation, starvation, etc. If you want to get scared, we are now in a cycle that you could argue started with the Industrial Revolution in the early 1800s. We are now more than 200 years into this. We could be one more example of the same phenomenon, but we think that somehow it's different this time. Since the 1800s, our population has grown four or fivefold, and it's quite conceivable that you could have a crash right back to where you were. When things are good, the population grows, and we sow the seeds of our own crisis. That is a lesson on the carrying capacity of the earth. Goodbye.